So hi, I'm uh, Ricky Mahalor, and today we're here to teach you how to create the uh, solar nightlight uh, with some cool add-ons. The PCB, 1000 microfarad capacitor, 1N4001 diodes, 78015 regulator, this is for the, uh, the solar panel for 15 volts, 7805 voltage regulator, this is for the uh, phone charger, a couple of resistors, the ferric chloride uh, to remove the unwanted uh, copper the alcohol so that we can remove the marker. 60% nickel, 40% lead wire, multiple colored wires, hand drill, soldering iron. We have the solar panel, this is a 5 watt, 18 volts, 12 volt battery, lead acid, a marker so that we'll be able to draw the circuit later on, a wire stripper, the desoldering soccer and the cutter so that we will shape the PCB to the size that we want later on. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get the correct size of PCB that we want for the particular purpose, okay? So what we have to do first is we have to draw the lines on the, uh, the size that we want on the PCB. What she's going to do now is she's going to run the cutter you don't have to apply too much pressure. You just have to do a couple of accurate repetitions to ensure that the edges of the board are properly cut or have a clean cut. So it's going to be about 20 cuts per side to ensure a perfect cut. Okay. If you have a very uh, solid table, you can actually use the edge to align the cut or the perforation on the, the PCB, just uh, snap it using your hands, okay? So as you can see, the edges are very, very clean. No copper has been stripped off. So uh, we're also gonna snap off the extra. So this is uh, what we actually need, that we're going to draw our circuit later on. So the next step, is to basically trace the outline of the schematic onto the PCB. Now, sometimes uh, the schematic, the actual um, electronic schematic, will be different from the uh, PCB layout. So right now, the, the schematic that we're going to do is the PCB layout already to maximize the space within the board. So we have uh, Claudette here. She will show us how to uh, draw the circuit on the board using the marker or the pencil pen method. As you can see, she already uh, penciled out the lines so that when she applies the marker, it's not going to be too difficult for her to draw it. So make sure, however, that your lines or the pencil pen marker is not too thin because if you do that, when we uh, soak it in ferric chloride later on, the lines will no longer be visible and it's going to be uh, a useless PCB because the circuit will not work properly. There are many ways to lay out the circuit on the PCB depending on how um, your level of experience on creating the PCB. So later on, we'll sh show you another layout, uh, the one that we have soaked in uh, ferric chloride already. It's going to be a slightly different layout, but it's going to be the same um, circuit. Okay. Submerge the PCB with the layout onto ferric chloride. So you don't have to put much like this one, you just have it submerged. So agitating that size takes about 5 to 10 minutes of continuously shaking the container until the unwanted copper is completely taken out. Before you take out uh, the, the board on the ferric chloride, you have to make sure that you're either wearing gloves or you have your equipment to take the card out without touching the ferric chloride because it's it's um, prolonged exposure to ferric chloride can cause um, skin diseases, you know, and it's acidic, so you don't want that on your skin too long. If you don't have gloves, you can just use sliers, and then we're gonna wash it in water. If you have running water around, that's gonna be better. So as you can see, if we compare, this one has its copper gone, or the unwanted copper is already gone as compared to this one which still has the copper there. Of course, you have to uh, keep it clean. My friend here, Neil, will uh, wipe off the excess water first. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of alcohol onto that board. So you can see the marker is already starting to fade. 
So just give it a wipe. So you want the pencil pen or the marker to completely be gone because if you're going to solder it later, it's going to be very difficult to solder the parts. So as you can see, the, the markings that we made using the marker protects the, uh, the copper or the copper trace that we want um, from being melted by the ferric chloride. The next step in creating the, the circuit is to actually drill the holes um, on the board so that you can actually put the components. So if we look at this particular layout, you can see that we already put nodes. Uh, the nodes or the, the small circles here are actually indications of we're supposed to be drilling um, holes onto the board so that we can attach the components later on. We're using 0.8 uh, diameter drill or drill bit. So you make sure you're doing it perpendicular uh, to the board. And where you're drilling as well, make sure that you don't take out or completely take out the copper around it because if you do that you won't have any place to put the solder in. After drilling uh, the, uh, the holes completely, we have here the completely drilled circuit board. Okay. So components such as the diodes and the capacitors and regulators, um, they have certain pins or specific pins that should be put in uh, a proper orientation, else they're not going to work. The first component that we're going to insert is the diode that's closest to the input of the solar panel. We can see here that the drawing for the diode has a line on it. If you look at the actual component of the diode, there's a gray strip on one of its ends. The line there is represented by the gray strip on this particular uh, circuit. So remember when you're inserting uh, the components, as much as possible, make sure that the parts or components are closest to the board. You don't want parts hanging around because there's a chance that you know, they, they, they might break or due to uh, constant movement, they eventually get worn out. So you, you don't want that. You want it as, as close, as flat as possible to the board, like this one. So now we're going to insert the uh, resistors. The resistors have certain color bands. So as you can see, so they look similar, but if you look closely, there are certain color bands, if you were going to count it, and they represent different values. So same with the uh, diodes. What we're going to do is we're going to insert them as well, making sure that they are compact and as close to the board as possible. Unlike the uh, diodes, transistors, and capacitors, this one does not require you to know what kind of orientation it will be inserted because it does not have any polarity. So just make sure they're on the right spots. Certain times that the PCB does not fit certain components, you can orient the components or resistors in that particular manner, but still protecting the, uh, the legs of the, tr the resistor because in this particular orientation, the legs are almost hidden and it's close to each other. Therefore, protecting it or making it a little bit sturdier than just hanging it around. These are called electrolytic capacitors, meaning they have polarity. So you must only insert them in a certain orientation. So the longer leg represents the uh, positive terminal and the shorter leg represents the negative terminal. So that's what we're gonna do it. Okay, and then the other one. All right. We have here the T7815. Uh, that's the 15 volt regulator that will be used to ensure that the voltage coming from the solar panel will remain at 15 volts. So make sure that you're very careful at kind of bending the legs because the legs of the transistors can easily break. So for the uh, regulator, make sure that we leave a certain amount of space between the board and the regulator because later on, we will be putting a heat sink on it to ensure that the heat that it dissipates will not damage the component. This is the 7805 regulator. Uh, it's actually used so that uh, we can use this particular circuit board or this particular circuit as, an, as a charger for your phones. 
Okay, this is optional though. You, you don't really have to put it in because for, with the with the seven eight zero one five component or the re regulator, it's actually a working circuit already. The final step, actually, uh, for assembling the circuit board, is to solder the parts in to make sure um, that they uh, they stay in place. Okay. If you're soldering, you have to have the soldering iron first and then put some lead until it forms a mountain, you know, kisses type of formation. That's when you know you have a perfect solder. So when soldering components such as transistors or regulators, they are more heat sensitive than the resistors and capacitors. So make sure that when you're soldering the parts in, such as the regulators, transistors, you don't spend too much time heating the component because it, it will damage the component permanently. You have to be uh, cautious when um, putting lead as well because you don't want the lead to spread to other uh, the copper lines because that's what's gonna create a short circuit damaging the components when you try to use it. To ensure that the uh, parts are properly soldered, the components must be in a uh, kisses or a mountain shape formation and it should, should have luster. If it doesn't, it might be what we call a cold solder. What does a cold solder mean? If you flip the circuit around and when you try to move this particular component here, you'll see that under the board, it'll also move if it's a cold solder. But this one is a good solder. As you can see, if we're moving the legs at the base, they remain um, static. They don't move. So what um, Anil now is uh, going to do is going to trim uh, the excess legs or the pins for the, uh, for the board. If you leave it lying around, what's gonna happen is they might have a tendency to stick to one another, causing a short or damage the component. Okay, you can use a cutter or even a nail cutter should be more appropriate because you can really get into those small ends. Make sure you don't yank the legs out, just give it a clean cut because if you do that, you might damage the board, especially the copper, you might tear it off the PCB. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the wires. So it's not important that we have multiple colored wires, but it's better because if you're going to troubleshoot it later on, it's going to be much, much easier. Every time you put in a wire, you have to solder it in. First is the white wire for the positive terminal of the uh, solar panel. And then of course we have to put in an equivalent uh, ground or negative terminal. Next one is the blue wire. This is for the battery that we're going to charge from the solar panel. The battery will serve as the power source at night so that even though there's no sunlight, we can use the battery to power the LED lights at night. So we're gonna connect now to the green wire. The green wire is for the light indicator if the solar panel is able to acquire enough power from the sunlight. Next would be the red wire for the switch or the LEDs, I'm sorry. That's where we're gonna attach the night light itself. Okay, now we're uh, connecting the, uh, the last wire, the yellow wire. This wire is for the optional 5 volt phone charger. And then after that, um, you can connect their corresponding black or ground uh, wires so that they can complete the circuit.